Alright guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about the Hunter Bond Beast Heart subclass. That's right. Which is from Matthew Colville. If you don't know what a Beast Heart is, make sure you go back and watch the overview video of the class so you can learn how it functions. Otherwise, you could get really lost. No. All that being said, if you're new to the channel or subclass series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in subclass, and we're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, overall class synergy, based on how the abilities gained in the subclass improve on the base class abilities. That's correct. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to yes. be entered in our D&D Beyond Players Bundle Giveaway. We like giveaway, free stuff. And of course, thank you again to our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Woo! Today we're going to be talking about the Big Bad Bundle. Campaign. Gives you some interesting campaigns and, and, and villain ideas that get you outside of just what's traditionally in 5th edition, because Right. Once you get above a certain CR level, the, the pool of choosing right. gets smaller and smaller. Make sure you check out the link down below. Helps us out. So, Alex, what do we get? Okay, starting off at class. level three, we have two different features. The first is Chosen Quarry. And that may sound familiar to some of the stuff you've heard, maybe from Hunter, Rangers, and things. You know, quarries and things. Mm. Whenever your companion gains ferocity at the start of your turn and does not enter a rampage, you can spend four ferocity and mark a creature within 90 feet of you. No action required. That's important. That creature becomes your quarry for one minute or until you use this feature to mark another target as your quarry. Whenever you or your companion hit your quarry with a weapon attack or deal damage to them with a ferocity action, that quarry takes an extra 1d6 damage. So it's essentially, it's a hunter's mark in damage for Ferocity. you and your companion on their uh, on a ferocity action. Uh, with And there's no concentration on it. Yes, is, so, very important. Which is very, very neat. Also at level 3, we get Hunter's Instincts. Your instincts improve, making you a formidable tracker and granting you better intuition. You gain proficiency in the survivor skill if you do not already have it. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make using that skill, and you can use survival instead of insight when you make a wisdom check to read a creature's intentions or discern if a creature is lying. So uh, it gives you some unique alternative ways to uh, learn more about lying creatures and, mm. of course, survival because you're a hunter. That's Makes right. sense. That's right. At level 7, we have Primal Warding. You learn to use primal magics to set traps made of nearly invisible force. As an action, you trap a 10-foot square area of ground centered on a point you can see within 30 feet of you, with a trap lasting for 8 hours or until triggered. I wonder why it's 8 hours. <laughs> <laughs> when you set the trap, you can designate any number of specific creatures that are unaffected by it. Finding the trap requires a successful intelligence investigation check against your exploit save DC. A creature that walks into the trap's area triggers the trap and must make a constitution saving throw against your exploit save DC. On a failure, the creature takes one... Oh, sorry, one. That's not a one. That's a four. <laughs> four D8. Force damage and is blinded for one minute. I think I was trying to read ahead there in my brain, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, on a success, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't blinded. A creature blinded by the trap can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, in the effect on themselves on the success, just like you normally would on an effect like that. Right. A mental alarm alerts you with the ping in your mind if you are within one mile of the trap when it is triggered. This ping awakens you if you are sleeping. If you set more than one trap, you know which one was triggered. You can use this feature number of uh, you can use this feature to set a number of traps equal to your wisdom modifier minimum of one. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Right. So essentially, it's just a variant to like the alarm spell, for example. Mm -hmm. But you, I mean, you have to be within one mile. So, if if you want to be alerted to it, right. Uh, and the thing that's nice is you get back on a long rest your uses. So if you haven't used any of them during the day, you could put a bunch of them you like around your camp. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. within a mile around your camp, you could put them, you know, scattered around, and maybe give you a better chance of triggering something. Or you could just be killing a bunch of random squirrels or something. So <laughs> there's always that too. <laughs> that's right. And at level 11, we have Synchronized Stealth. You and your companions learn to become unseen at the time in the blink of an eye. When either you or your companion takes the hide action, you could, the other can take the hide action as a reaction if they are able to hide. Additionally, when you take the hide action within 5 feet of your companion, you have advantage on the Dexterity Stealth check made as part of the action. So you get a little bit of usage in combat for some utility, which we'll get into here when we get to the combat rating. And of course, also... Having the ability to always gain advantage on stealth checks is yeah. going to come into play in the roleplay value as well, which we will also get to. Indeed. And finally at 15, we have Unseen Hunters. You can use an action to make you and your companion invisible for 10 minutes. 
While invisible, neither of you can be tracked by non-magical means unless you or your companion chooses to leave a trail. Either of you can end the invisibility on yourself as a bonus action. If you use this feature, you can use it again when you finish a long rest. So it is a yes. once per day feature. And there it is. Those are all the abilities gained in the mm -hmm. subclass. So now we'll move on to the rating portion. First up is the roleplay value asterisk as, as always. always. Talking about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Right. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass and how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. So, all of that being said on here, you may have noticed a few very interesting RP options. Yes. Of course, as I mentioned already, the bonus to survival. Uh, sure, that's yep. nice to have. And then, of course, using insight for a wisdom check instead mm -hmm. is going to make a little bit of a difference. I'm not sure how often you're going to be trying to detect if someone is lying or a creature is lying. Yep. Uh, it is a little open-ended on there, so depending on some weird circumstances... There's going to be some creature, fun discussion between you and your DM about... Right. Yeah, it doesn't say humanoid, so there's going to be some weird stuff yeah. on there, especially if you, if you somehow have, like... Speak with animals or something. I don't know. Yep. Plants. Uh, if you're trying to see if a plant is lying to you, I, I don't know. There's some weird stuff that can happen, but it can be done, apparently. <laughs> uh, so there's uh, that. Cool. And then the trap has some RP value, as I said. Yep. Um, but how often is it really going to matter? I mean, it depends on the campaign setting, of course. Uh, it is a small radius for it to, tr to trigger as well. So depending yep. on circumstances, if you're just like camping out in the wilderness or something... What are the odds that something's going to stumble upon, you know, that small trap? Yeah. Unless it's, like, in the middle of your path that you took and maybe someone's trying to track you. Yeah. I don't know how effective it's really going to be. But having that option is nice. And you could always just use it, like I said, at the end of every day. You could just put a bunch of traps out around where you're camping just in case, which can come into play. And, of course, if you're trying to um, run away from someone or maybe you have an anticipation of where someone's going to go mm -hmm. and you preemptively set a trap like on maybe an escape route yep. and you ambush someone and they're like the only way they could get out is through this way here and you set a trap preemptively yep. there's some stuff that can be done there for sure uh, and then of course the stealth bonus is going to be helpful to just always have the ability to gain advantage sure and then invisibility for 10 minutes once a day it is a once a day ability which has a limitation, obviously, and it's sure. probably going to be more effective in combat, but you have the option to use it in RP, depending mm -hmm. if you really need it for whatever reason. Sure. So definitely has some potential and utility on the RP side. All that being said, we gave it a 4 out of 5 in the role play department. Yes. With that being done, over to the combat side of things, where there's plenty of options. <laughs> Uh, obviously, we start off with the chosen quarry thing is clearly a combat-based thing. It is a slightly buffed version of Hunter's Mark because does, it's not taking your concentration to be a spell to hold on to things. Right. It does have a range of 90 feet. Any increase in your floor of your damage is great, so fantastic. The Hunter Instincts is strictly RP-based things. The Primal Warding is... That's where it, RP combat kind of bleed into each other a little bit because you're talking yeah. about like traps and things because... To me, the setting part of it is kind of more of an RP thing because there's a check to find it and things like that. But it also does create damage. So if you're trying to set an ambush spot, like Jameson said, that definitely kind of goes into the combat side in terms of preparation because right. you can maybe kind of either pigeonhole somebody around your traps to like, oh, they're, they're, you know, you know, you know, somebody's kind of coming after you, and you haven't hit any of your traps. You know that they've probably either found them. And got around there where they came right. from a different direction, one or the other. So you maybe look at more of the smarter person kind of thing. You yep. know, if you did that kind of thing. So there's there's information you can glean from it that helps combat ahead of time with you know that kind of thing. Uh, then synchronized stealth, you know, letting you take the hot action as a reaction, help definitely helpful for your combat kind of thing. Um, but aside from the chosen quarry thing, you're not getting any like damage output increases. You know, the, the trap hits it does damage in the blind. Uh, aside from that, most of it, what you're getting is focused on exploration, is it traps protecting your long rest or your right. movement, uh, you know, the st 10 minutes of stealth, things like that with the uh, Unseen Hunters. Definitely leans more toward uh, the RP side of things, but there are 
some niche options for how it will help you in combat information. You can glean things like that. So we went with the three yes. out of a possible five on the combat side of things. Again, there's a lot of little stuff, and you do have a great opener with the Chosen Quarry helping your floor damage out with being a buffed Hunter's Mark, essentially. Right. It's just you don't have a whole lot of options. You're doing just a little bit more damage. Yep. So there is that with the Hunter's Mark, which is nice. And then you do have the invisibility, which it doesn't... It, it doesn't say it breaks when you are in combat, no, but it, it is once a day. Yeah. So if you have, I mean, one combat a day, you're going to have that. Okay. You're going to gain some advantage. It's going to make the, the hiding and stuff easier. And the thing with that where it's like if one uses it, a hide action, you can reaction. There's some weird circumstances where maybe you or the creature can't get into range or something. So yeah. then you take advantage on a, a stealth and then, or you take advantage on an attack because you hid with your reaction. So there's some weird shenanigans that yep. could come up, but probably more on the niche side of there. And then all of that being said, to transition into the synergy side, yep. there is, again, like I was just saying, with the sync stealth, there is some minor synergy, but it's going to be very situational on that outside of, you know, just the RP element to yeah. it, which is just nice to have always that ability to do that. And then Chosen Quarry helps you focus fire on an enemy and really... Uh, give you and your companion a target to really double down on and just mm -hmm. hound and give them a, a hard time. Yep. And it may more focused use for your ferocity actions, for right. sure. Right. Uh, and then there's just, there's some very minor, like we talked about before with the trap. I mean, it's very, very situational. I feel like majority of the time it's going to come up in RP more or like in a, the same kind of use cases with the alarm spell for the most yeah. part but you do have it as an action so you could do some shenanigans where you're setting it up and kind of pushing and stuff things onto it you know I don't know it, it's very there's some very minor niche synergy yeah. with there because it does say a creature walks into a traps area so you could do some shenanigans, but yeah. it's just trying to like figure out how that would actually be used, and it's probably yeah. not going to have a whole lot going on. Yeah. You do, depending on what companion you pick and what primal exploits you pick, you could maybe try to do some there's, setups. There's, and there's stuff. definitely some ways you could get them to trigger around it, but, but of course that's going to be very dependent on your choices that you make in the uh, class creation kind yes. of part of character building. Which is a lot going to go into this with the combination of the exploits yes. and your companion. Right. There's a lot of customizable options, but it can also be a little bit overwhelming with all the different choices right. that are there. All that being said, we just gave it a flat three in the synergy. Mm -hmm. There's some use cases on here, but we feel like a lot of it is niche or situational. Yeah. But the things that you do have are going to be pretty impactful. Yeah, for sure. Considering they don't really have limitations. So, outside of the stealth or the invisibility, I should say. Yeah. The stealth doesn't have limitations. The invisibility does. And then the Hunter's Mark just, okay, I'll it's take true. a little bit extra damage all the time. And it's great that it comes in early. I think things right. like that that help your damage floor, that's never going to be bad. Yeah, well, 1d6 doesn't feel great at level 18, but it's never a bad thing. And you can right. then there's no limitation to doing it. Exactly. So it's just, yeah, you can keep doing it. <laughs> so that's extra d6 hey, is take never advantage bad. of that. <laughs> But yeah, that's it for today, guys. Let us know your thoughts on the Beast Heart class, on the first couple subclasses, uh, what your thoughts are. If you'd want to play one of these or the other, your favorites so far, what abilities you like, don't like. Just general overview. Love to hear that. Absolutely. Especially with all this homebrew stuff. Always nice to see people's opinions on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. Remember to check out our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Check out their big bad stuff. Absolutely. Great way to find some new, unique monsters and stuff to uh, throw your companions and beast hearts against. Yeah, and your people who accidentally try not to meta game but end up doing because they know what the creature is they're fighting. Not if you throw this stuff at them, they have no <laughs> idea what that is. Exactly. <laughs> Got them. But. If you enjoyed the video, guys, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so you know when our new videos are coming out. And as always, thanks for watching.